depression or something like that. And so, whoa, 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 not right now. Put that away if it comes to mind, all right? So it's 5.30. I'm very tired. I let the dogs out, feed the animals, get dressed, do my hair, brush my teeth, and I head out. So it's about six o'clock and it takes me about 30 to 40 minutes to get to work depending on traffic. There's a little bit today, so it's looking more like 35. I like to use this time uh, because it, I mean, it's more than a half an hour each way for the most part for me. I try to use it for listening to my audiobook, and that allows me to sort of keep learning things in my field of uh, study because, man, you're going to find out, especially as a new teacher, that you don't know nearly as much as you thought you did. Um, it can be a little bit harder on the way home, usually for me to listen to an audiobook because sometimes my brain's all jumbled, especially after the long days like uh, the days in April and May. But um, for the most part, you know, I try to use it as an opportunity to uh, learn something. But sometimes I just veg and listen to music. So depends on the day. This is about 6.30. Sun's starting to come up. Let's get in that room. Got about an hour till uh, class starts. Let's have a good day. So it's about 6.30. I like to get in here about an hour or 45 before class actually starts, just in case anything's really gone wrong. Sometimes certain technologies aren't working or you forgot to print out papers or there's some other kind of change that you have to adapt to uh, before class starts. And it, that extra time really gives you a chance to do that. So one of the first things I like to do when I come in is I wanna make sure to change the agenda for the day and the objective uh, so kids know what we're doing. I also like to make sure my TA is set up for any grading or setting up that I have to do with a project. Having a TA is essential because I mean, there's just a lot of stuff to do and you wanna make sure that you can get home as early as possible each day. I also like to use the time, especially if you're a new teacher, to prepare for the day. Like, you know, um, if I've got like a series of lectures or something I'm going to be talking about uh, that I'm not quite familiar with or that I need to update myself on, I kind of outline it and make sure that I have everything ready for when the actual class comes along. After I've got that done, I like to make sure I have a checklist of all the things I have to do that day, all the things that are my prep, things I have to do in class, and uh, not only does that sort of give me like a, a list to cross off and give me nice little dopamine hits throughout the day, but also it helps me not to forget what I need to do throughout the day because I, I know at least personally, if it's not on a list, I am very likely to forget it throughout the day. I also like to check my email once before school and then as well as at noon and before I leave, but also alerts me, especially at the beginning of the day, uh, in case I forgot about anything like, you know, a, a rally, some sort of schedule change and emergency drill. These are all things you kind of have to be up to date on. I also make sure to enter all the totals uh, for my economy game that I play. Originally, I just had this for my economics class, but I figured that I could use it for any class that I want to. It's kind of like an incentive system where every time kids do something, whether it's a review game we play or an assignment, they earn money that they can either save or spend or invest. And uh, if they're going to be spending those that money, it's going to be on things like quizzes, essays, extra credit, buying out of assignments or things like that. So this is for my world history class. I printed these out last Friday, so I wouldn't have to print them out this morning. And these are jigsaws. I like to do these on the beginning of the week, like a Monday, because this gets them into a, a group project that is, allows them to either if they're tired or if they're a little energetic, they can sort of work at their own pace with other people. Um, they each do a section. There's four sections and four people in each group. Uh, they have a certain amount of time to do it, roughly 30 or 40 minutes. Then I collect them and we play a trivia game. And this also brings an added element of uh, entertainment and engagement. And these are really just terms that we use throughout the week. So we're starting World War II. So here's some basic start up to World War II terms uh, as we get going through uh, regular world history. And uh, that's usually how I start my week. My second and fourth period are AP Euro and AP Psych. Uh, we're getting pretty close to the actual AP test. That's going to be in about three ish weeks. So um, it's a little more material intense at this point because uh, we got to get finished and we got to review before the actual test. Now first period's about to come in and I'm good to go. I got all my stuff ready. I generally like to start each class with, except for AP classes, just because we have a time constraint, uh, with CNN 10, which is a good way for them to sort of get their daily news. And it's it's kind of entertaining too. Sometimes we discuss what was on the news. After CNN 10's done, they're usually calm and primed and ready to go and we get started on our assignment or the notes or whatever we've got going that day. Alright, go ahead and take a break.
We'll uh, tune these in about five or ten minutes. First question. This was a conflict between the elected communist government of Spain, the Republicans, versus the fascist-led rebels, the nationalists. What was the name of that conflict? All right, looks like everybody is awake. It is the Spanish Civil War. Everybody got that one. So everyone's in first. Congratulations. You're like, uh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, where are you guys' phones at? There. Play yours. Pocket, let's get it up on the desk. How do you think it's known about history? Like, that's why I always wondered how do history teachers find out history in a book? Yeah, we go to school. Okay, still. Uh, but some, how would they, how would your teachers know about history if they weren't there in 1939? Uh, well, there's videos, there's books, there's teachers. It gets, it gets passed on. Maybe the videos are fake, because you know, sometimes they be cartoonish and stuff. Sometimes, but when everyone's agreed upon it and lots of people live through it and talk about it, we pretty much know. I had to think about no, this. No, it's a good question. What you do is you take multiple sources of people that don't know each other and see if they match up. And that's I had to think accurate. about this, but I literally just thought of like, I was like, oh, I got literally. Yeah, I know, like, if your history book's all fake and that ever happened, you get a little conspiracy theory on me, but yeah. Yeah. But yeah, if you can take multiple sources of people that don't know each other and the, the stories line up, then you know it's, it's probably true. Oh, yeah. No, good guess. All right, so next question. No, no, no. You're not going to the ties or ties or lane. What was the month that? Oh, December. It's December. December 1941. Um, the question is... Who attacked us to bring us into the war? Oh. And where? Come on, right? Literally. Nope. Ah, okay. So, <laughs> what year did the war end? Oh my god, I just asked you that too. <laughs> What year did World War II? And we haven't talked about it yet, but if you know it, take a guess. I'll tell you it's not 1975. That would be a very long one. Officially with the dream? Uh, no, just when the last when the last country surrendered. Yeah, that is correct. Damn it. Alright. <laughs> Which country surrendered last? Oh my god. <laughs> no, we're gonna, we're gonna, well, okay, we'll do rock versus after this one. Which country surrendered last? <laughs> All right, take a number one. Two. You got a guess? Okay. Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, pick a pick someone with Rochambeau. It quick, go. Go, go. Went from here, like yeah, from there, from there, from there. Wait, best to three or just, best to three. just the first one, just the first one. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Damn it! Hey. Good point. That's good one. Oh, 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 So about halfway through the class, I generally tend to give a break of about five, six, seven, eight minutes, depending on how the class is going. Um, and that's really to break up the block periods because we have these long 90 minute uh, blocks and it's really hard for students obviously to, or any adult to sit there for 90 minutes uh, and be attentive and participate. So uh, I kind of hold it over their head as something they can lose if they're not cooperating that day or they're being loud or whatever. Um, and it, it just functions really well as a kind of a break in the middle of the period. Let lets kids come back and you know refocus um, after that break. So that's what that is. All right, so second period's about to start. I just took a break. Um, we have a, about a 10 minute brunch in between first and second period. Uh, I like to, of course, bolt to the bathroom, you know, if you got to. And um, it's a good chance to sort of chat up some colleagues too. But the bell's about to ring here. Um, and anytime I have left over, I usually dedicate to preparing for my second period. My second period's AP Psych, so it's mostly gonna be lecturing, uh, especially as we get closer to the AP test. Um, I actually finished covering all the content next week, and we'll begin using the actual class periods for review. And then after that, 
the nice thing about AP is you kind of just get to chill for the rest of the time, have them work on projects, movies, things like that. So now that second period's over, I have a lunch that combines with my third period, and that's a really easy opportunity uh, to get lazy. So I try to jump right into it. I generally eat immediately, and I walk over, use the restroom, you know, socialize with the teachers, and then I come back uh, for the next 90 minutes or so, and I try to jump right into it, because this is where you want to get your stuff done, because you don't want to take it home. So this is where you, you know, do the grading, you enter in all of the grades you already have, or in my case, if you're working on the, uh, if we got the economy going, I'm, all the kids that earn money today, I gotta enter it in uh, on the spreadsheets. And that's also too where I work on, you know, adjusting my lesson plans or anything, which I do frequently, uh, as well as uh, making either new videos or new materials for teachers, be it uh, AP or regular, uh, for my website, morganaptteaching.com. It can also be a good time to reflect on maybe like what went well, what didn't go well, how you could improve it, uh, or ways you could reteach things. But regardless, it's very easy to fall into, oh, my prep is just a second lunch that I can be lazy. Um, and you certainly can if you would like to, but uh, I try not to as I don't want to either fall behind or take stuff home. So here we go, 90 minutes of work. This one's going to start out uh, Soviet Union, United States. Um, you guys remember the Allies of the United States, known as the First World. And the Allies of the Soviet Union are the Second World. Second World, and then the State World, which we don't, don't think about. Maybe. Right, yeah, be quiet. So, um, Third World, yes, are people that are not aligned. Uh, they are commonly mislabeled as being poor, although most of them are poor. Uh, but yeah, it's actually an old Cold War term. I told you that before, though. So. Economic depression or something like that. And so, whoa, whoa, whoa. Not right now. Put that away if it comes to mind, all right? All right. So, anyways, International Monetary Fund. That is something that is going to... So now that fourth period is done, uh, the kids have left, and I am going to down a protein bar, use the restroom real quick, and uh, this is the real kicker for uh, AP classes is, since I had <clears throat> four this year, and the AP test is drawing near, I have a lot of study hall sessions after school. These study hall sessions are pretty lengthy, uh, especially considering how many AP classes I have. And uh, they normally run about 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. I do not do this all year. Uh, I do have weekly study halls that are an hour, one for each class during the week. So it's usually only about two a week. But uh, in April and early May, I'm here a lot. And uh, much to the chagrin of my wife and family, but eh, you've got to do what you got to do in AP season. So I let the students in from 3 to 6. We take a break in the middle, roughly around 4, 30 or so. And then we get around out around 6 o'clock. And that's when I actually get to head home. So that's what we're doing right now. i um, going to start that study hall pretty soon here. So it is about 6 o'clock. Been going for about 12-ish hours now. And... Uh, gonna make my way home. There's usually not too much traffic at this time, so I'm hoping I'll get home in like 30, 35 minutes. Um, I feel a little exhausted today, but uh, usually I listen to an audiobook. I probably will today, uh, but sometimes my brain is just like, it's down, especially after all the hours of talking. I you can tell my voice definitely feels uh, a little raspy and worn out. Um, so, yeah, I'll be heading home now, and be listening to either music or an audiobook depending on what my brain can handle. Well, it's about 6.30 now and uh, just got home, so I'm gonna go spend about an hour with the kids before they go to bed, and then my wife usually conks out about after she's eight months pregnant. So after she goes to bed, I'll do a little bit of lifting and then I'll uh, work on some website and listen planning. And that's my day. So it's about 8.30 now. 
kids are in bed, wife's in bed. And uh, this is the time I dedicate to myself, if any. Tonight I'll actually be working on um, some things for my website. And I will also be using my mini home gym. Um, just do some light exercises to keep my body and mind fresh. Because a little AP psych for you. Um, exercise is the best way to um, stave away cognitive decline. Who knew? So from about 8 till 10 or so, that's what I do, is work on either lesson plans or my website or new product ideas, and then I combo that, of course, with um, exercise every day. Uh, upper body or lower body, I alternate. <clears throat> not, not to get huge, obviously, uh, just to keep that steady health going. One thing I will say, though, is you don't have to go as hardcore as I go. Um, don't worry about 14, 15-hour days. Um, but that is definitely optional. Um, what I would tell you, though, is when you start out, you're going to have a lot of those days. So the first couple years when you don't know what you're doing or you don't have any materials or anything like that, uh, it's, it's going to be hard to get by on regular eight-hour days. In fact, I would just tell you that you're not going to get that. I mean, maybe if you find a colleague with a bundle or you buy a bundle or something like that online, but for the most part, you're going to be working extensively um, your first couple of years until you get in into your rhythm, figure out your style, and get yourself a consistent set of materials to work with and improve upon uh, as you go. If you are a new teacher though, of course, check with your colleagues to see if they have anything that can help you out. Uh, but there's lots of stuff online. I have stuff, other teachers have stuff. Feel free to check it out. I have my website, morganapteaching.com. There's lots of stuff on Teachers Pay Teachers, not just from me, but from other people. So whatever suits you best, um, pursue that because that's what you wanna find is, well, of course, something that works, and then of course, whatever fits your style. And of course, a lot of you have to figure out what that style is but um, it'll, come with, it'll come with time. Be sure to watch that in the future. I'll be making lots of videos like these, especially videos for newer teachers because I've had a lot of new teachers message me before, email me and things like that. So I'll give you kind of a basic rundown about stuff you can look out for, stuff to do, how to prepare for it, um, and where you can find materials. So I'll get my clothes ready for tomorrow, my lunch, uh, finish this up, finish that up, and hit the sack around 10.30. Hopefully this is helpful for you guys. Uh, if it was, feel free to like and subscribe, and make sure to hit that little bell uh, so it notifies you when I come up with new teacher stuff. Later.